Hello and welcome to the Justice Factor. I'm Justice Malala. We are now reaching the end of the beginning in this matter. These are the words of DA leader Helen Ziller last Thursday, after a five-year battle in which the party fought for the so-called spy tapes to be made public. These recordings led to the withdrawal of corruption charges against Jacob Zuma on the eve of the 2009 elections. Last week, the Supreme Court of Appeal ruled that the NPA must hand over the recordings. So, what now? DA, DA leader Helen Ziller is my guest today. Premier Helen Zeller, welcome to the show. What's the significance of your uh, resounding victory last Thursday? The significance is that we now get to see why the charges against President Zuma were withdrawn in 2009, just before the election then. And then we'll be able to see if there were solid legal reasons to withdraw the charges, or if the NPA did it for political reasons. And that is very significant because if we're going to be a democracy and defend our equality under the Constitution, we have to make sure that the president and nobody else is above the law. No one must be above the law. Mm. So this is about our institutions, protecting them, and the core principle of our democracy, which is equality before the law. So on Thursday, hopefully, you will be handed over the, the tapes. What happens if they, um, they are not extra extraordinary, they don't show any conspiracy? What happens then? Well, then they will be really explosive. Because if they were to show a conspiracy, then the National Prosecuting Authority could argue that there were legal reasons to show that Jacob Zuma was the victim of a conspiracy. Mm. If there's nothing on them, well, then they are really explosive because that proves that, in fact, there were no legal reasons to withdraw the case and it must have been for political reasons. Do you believe that the NPA will hand these uh, tapes over after all the, the long, long battle that's happened? Well, there's a court order, and if they don't, they will be in contempt of court, and then we will have to get a warrant for the arrest of the National Director of Public Prosecutions, which will be unprecedented in our democracy. And there's not only the tapes, uh, Justice, there's also the full record of decision that is going to go now to Judge Hurt, and he's going to determine which parts of that record are privileged and which we must have. So those are going to be also very interesting because, as we remember from the time, there were deep differences in the National Prosecuting Authority about whether or not to withdraw the charges against Jacob Zuma. Mm -hmm. And we will get all of those minutes and all of the record, and it'll be very interesting to see what arguments were being made on either side and whether Mokotedi and Peshe at the time made a legal case for withdrawing the charges or indeed whether there was no rational legal reason and whether it was political. The way you put it, Thursday is a big, big day, and, uh, and I wonder actually whether, uh, and m many people have asked these questions, whether uh, President Zuma himself won't try to stop uh, the NPA uh, going ahead with this. Look, I don't think it's possible for him to do that, because if we go, don't get the tapes, there will be all hell to pay. The Supreme Court of Appeal has ruled that we must get them. Yeah. And believe me, we a will check... A chance of the Constitutional Court? Well... President Zuma's own counsel, Kemp J. Kemp, has conceded before the Supreme Court of Appeal that he doesn't have a case. So I don't know what case they would be taking to the Constitutional Court. It would be a very frivolous and vexatious filibuster, and the Constitutional Court would see it for what it is. Does this mean that after Thursday, when you examine those tapes uh, with your legal uh, personnel and so forth, that President Zuma could face charges again of, uh, of corruption? It'll take a while. We'll obviously have to go through the transcript of the tapes and the tapes and have the originals tested for their authenticity so that we know that they haven't been tampered with. Then Judge Hurt will have to go through the record of decision with all the documents. And then our legal team will have to advise us on whether there is a case for review. And if there is a case for review, which we strongly believe will be the case, then we will have to go back to court and say, we ask the High Court to review the decision of the prosecuting authority to withdraw the charges against Jacob Zuma and reinstitute those charges. This is a process that could take years and years. It could, but it's certainly very important that we do it. Because if early on in our democracy, and our democracy is still relatively young, if early on in our democracy we establish very firmly the principle of equality before the law, it will have been worth every minute. 
Tell me about the institutions, because you've spoken about, about uh, parliament, about the public protector, and so forth. Are, are there institutions working in this country? Are they strong enough? Yes, I think they are. I think most of them are. Some aren't. But it's remarkable how resilient many of them still are. The media, f for a large part, are still very vibrant and muscular. I think that the public protector obviously is. The courts are still ruled by law and constitutionalism and not by political favors by and large. Obviously, that doesn't count for every single judge, but by and large. And there is no doubt that the institutions have been very robust in this and many other matters. But from the, the SCA judgment, um, the NPA, certainly Nom Chiva, the acting head of the NPA at the time, uh, that sounds like an institution that's fallen apart. It's fallen apart, but ironically, this case could save it. Because if the judges conclude that the NPA was influenced politically and that they did not do their work in terms of their constitutional mandate, that will clean out the stables at the NPA and we should make a fresh start. Mm. It will probably mean that Pre President Zuma would be out and I don't think another president would dare to try and manipulate the NPA to his will again. Well, we'll see what happens on Thursday. But um, you come to us today, it's 100 days of this uh, administration. How has the ANC done? Well, the ANC has been on the back foot throughout this administration. We've seen the crisis around Nkandla. We have seen the crisis around the spy tapes and Jacob Zuma's judge, con a lawyer, conceding in court that he didn't have a case. They dragged this hearing through six court cases over five years without a case, which shows how they filibustered the courts. And indeed, President Zuma doesn't answer questions about anything in Parliament. It is an administration in crisis, unable to implement its national development plan in stasis of internal conflict. So it's been a very tough 100 days for the ruling party. A lot of people are asking about the, op the opposition and saying the EFF in these 100 days uh, of this administration, the EFF has become the official opposition and the DA has just, uh, it's over for the DA. <laughs> well, you know, people have predicted that it's over for the DA since Bantu Holomisa started the UDM. And then when Patricia DeLille came along in the early 1990s, they said it's over for the DA. When COPE came along, they said it's definitely over for the DA. But if you look at the last week and look at what the EFF's done, they had a bit of guerrilla theatre in Parliament. It's what did they achieve? A lot of people are talking about Nkandla today and calling for Nkandla. For well, they were talking about Nkandla a long time ago. And in fact, the public protector would never have ordered Jacob Zuma to pay back the money if the DA hadn't taken the Nkandla matter to the public protector in the first place. Don't you think the DA in Parliament is being outmaneuvered and outplayed by the EFF? Not at all. You see, we need strong parliamentary institutions. And Jacob Zuma and Julius Malema are two sides of the same coin. They both showed fundamental disrespect for Parliament. They're both breaking down that institution. Jacob Zuma by refusing to answer questions and Julius Malema by making a mockery of the institution. He still didn't get any answers out of Jacob Zuma. And immediately after that, we went using an institution for the purpose the Constitution intended, and we got the superb victory, and was only one of four victories But a lot of people week. would say, well, you know, the EFF managed to embarrass the ANC and the President in Parliament and make him really think long and hard about how he's going to respond to the Nganda issue. Sure, they had a nice media hype for one day. But what really matters is the long haul. Democracy is built in painstaking steps not in flash moments of media hype, not at all. But the DA has done, uh, has had its flash moments. It's of course, uh, but many, they're not many. the only things we do. They're not the only things we do. We have our great flashes, of course. So there's some similarity between yourselves and the EFF, because the EFF is taking legal action against the speaker and so forth. It's a, it's a double-edged, uh, double-pronged attack. It's not just one thing. We never do things that undermine the institutions of our democracy. We build the institutions of our democracy, because we know the future of this country depends on big institutions, not big men. And Julius Malema and Jacob Zuma are both big men who would destroy the institutions of democracy if they had a chance. Helen Zillet, that's all we have time for. Thanks so much for coming through, and good luck on Thursday. Thank you very much, Justice.
when we return the top stories of the week, we talk to two of South Africa's most interesting authors.